Today's dApps and DeFi protocols are wide open for everyone to see, with all of your financial transactions and data visible. We spoke with Marvin Tong about how Fala and Kala are reversing that trend through trusted computing and private smart contracts. Hi there, and welcome to the Parachain Auctions podcast hosted by Kraken. I'm Brian Hoffman, crypto platform product lead, and I'm glad you could join me out here on the cutting edge of crypto technologies. On this show, you'll hear from leaders and innovators around the world building parachains on Polkadot and Kusama. Tune in for insights from the best and brightest about their new projects. Whether this is the first you've heard of parachains or you're a DeFi aficionado, come with us behind the scenes as we explore the technology of the future today. Today we have with us Marvin Tong, founder of the Fala Network. Welcome, Marvin. Hi, guys. Uh, thank, nice to meet you, Brian. Yeah, so it's really great to have you on the show. Uh, we've been trying to get this one scheduled for a little while, and uh, I'm really glad to be able to get to talk to you today a little bit about Fala and everything going on. Um, maybe to just kick it off, we'd mm-hmm. love to really, I mean, I know that this is a privacy conscious uh, network. So, you know, feel free not to share all the details, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with this project. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Um, hi, guys. Uh, I'm Marin Tung. I'm the uh, founder and uh, CEO of Fala Network. Uh, before I uh, built uh, Fala with Hang in my co-founder together, uh, I worked in uh, Tencent and Didi, the, the two uh, major internet companies in China. And during that period, because I'm also like a product manager, like right here, so uh, I uh, uh, found out the issues that the, how the centralized companies using the data from users. So that uh, realized me that uh, we need to like uh, build something to protect people's uh, data uh, privacy. So that's the original version of Fala. And after that, we found Polkdot. So uh, we uh, think uh, Substreet and Polkdot is a very good platform to uh, achieve our version. So uh, that's why we bring a Fala network here. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Um, there's a lot of projects that want to focus or, or say they're focusing on uh, privacy. Mm-hmm and data protection. But, um, you know, we have, we've seen a lot of kind of pushback from governments and regulate re- regulators around this. Um, so it's, it's, it's actually a pretty challenging space. What, um, you know, what, what have you found to be some of the challenges, uh, building this kind of network from the ground up? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, brain, uh, you, you point out the major issue that, um, uh, there are different types of uh, privacy in the world. For example, like financial privacy, data privacy, but the hardest part is the data privacy uh, protecting. For example, uh, if we want to just uh, be uh, totally isolated from the data collection, it's pretty easy. You just uh, using the Onion network, something like this to mm-hmm. protect yourself. It's okay. Uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, while you are doing uh, privacy uh, protecting for yourself or building such tools, you're also losing much of the convenience that the internet, the AI, the smart suggestion bring into the world. So um, I, 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 we, we, we think that if we want the, you know, the people can... Um, uh, be uh, be wildly using privacy tools or privacy preserving technology service. We don't. Uh, we, we definitely won't uh, cut down the user experience. You know, we need to keep them. So, how to keep the user experience in of all the you know fancy yeah. functions we are using today? But in the meanwhile, we keep the privacy for people. So that is the most like. Um, hard problem we need to solve. So there are not so much technology are solving this, but uh, I think uh, uh, Zeki Knowledge, MPC, FHE, and also TE, of course, co- combined with blockchain, uh, can build uh, such a, uh, a system. 
uh, which I think the perfect uh, word for that is Web3, you know, presented and uh, be famous by uh, Dr. Gan Woods. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's the, that, that, that's the difference and the most uh, challenging part in our end. Yeah, I think it's um, it's quite a noble uh, mission to try and help you know make security user experience um, simpler. Yep. It, it's challenge. I mean, in, you know, there's always the joke in in cybersecurity. It's like you either have security or you have convenience, but you yep. can't have both, right? Yeah. But um, you know, so so we've talked a little bit about the challenges of this problem. But like, why don't we just talk even specifically about Fala? What is Fala and how is it working to try and cut down on that, uh, the complexity and, um, you know, challenge of, of keeping data secure and private? Uh, cool. Thank you, Brian. Um, many people think uh, Fala is a privacy protocol, but actually um, uh, it's not quite right. Uh, what we are doing is more like uh, we are building a, 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 a next generation cloud protocol but this cloud we call it we call it web3 cloud any web3 cloud should like privacy preserving uh you know in nature so in this case um in very you know simple words i will describe a uh, file network is a web3 compute uh, cloud that supports data privacy while remaining the trustless you know like unlike you know a centralized cloud service or we don't own any server or any data center. Anyone can provide their permissionless servers into the file network. And because of the combination of blockchain and the trusted execution environment, we call it TE, we can make sure that the servers can't be evil, can't be evil, even, even uh, when they're in a edge network situation. So together, this creates the infrastructure for, um, you know, uh, a powerful uh, security and a scalable trusted computing cloud. We, um, yeah, so so that's what Fala Network is. So just for our listeners, because some of them may not be as, um, you know, technology mm -hmm. aware, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned TEE, the yeah. trusted execution environment. So yep. this is essentially a, a, a part of the, the, the computer that can actually execute code in an, and it can't be tampered with, right? Yeah. If I understand that correctly. And so uh, what you're saying is that the people are, that are operating on this network can, can perform some kind of functionality within that environment. And then people on the network can trust that nothing has been changed or, or modified, right? Mm, how to put this? Uh, you can imagine um, uh, TE is like a, a physically hardware design. And the, the, the purpose for, for TE is to protect the the computation inside inside a um, black box so that the, the data processing can't be uh, uh, touched or uh, explored by any third party. So the very, you know, uh, it, it's a 10-year techno history technology like uh, blockchain. Uh, the, the very original purpose to build such thing is uh, like, you know, um, to pro protect the right, uh, the 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 right right for the copyright for uh, many uh, uh, like uh, animations, films, and books, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's a it, it's a very old technology, and uh, after that, uh, like the the all the major CPU uh, companies like Intel and AMD and even ARM uh, begin to provide a standard. Uh, for uh, trusted execution, so that uh, the developers can know this CPU, uh, the enclave area in this CPU is uh, uh, well protected uh, by hardware. Uh, of course, hardware can be you know can be broken uh, by different types of uh, uh, attentions, but uh, you can uh, imagine it as a lower trustless uh, protocol or standard than uh, blockchain itself. Blockchain is very highest, uh, you know, uh, standard for trustless and uh, TE is a lower standard, but it doesn't mean that uh, it's, uh, it's a worthy, uh, it, it don't have advantage. advantage. The best part of it 
is that it keeps very, very well performance in generalized computation so that it means that it can uh, be adopted by most of the widely using programs in the near days. Um, so and uh, keep a very higher uh, performance in uh, hardware. So um, yeah, you know, trade off uh, between the trustees and performance. So T is like something in the middle. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's more of a hybrid approach. Um, so I've heard you mention before on, on a, on a different, um, interview that you did that, um, you know, and this is, this is a topic that's like very top of mind right now, which is energy consumption, uh, mm -hmm. for like Bitcoin mining and, and how, you know, supposedly destructive it is to the environment. You know, it's debatable, but I know that, um, you've, you've mentioned, uh, before that using the TEE has made it so that, uh, people who are essentially, you know, you don't call it mining, but yeah. you know, the miners for your network, um, can use this. It's a lower cost to entry. It doesn't cost a lot. They can run it on computers with much smaller hardware. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the advantages of that in terms of like, uh, you know, in comparison to mining on other, yeah. other networks. Uh, thank you, Brian. It's a very interesting topic. I think you, uh, many audience might be uh, interested in this part. You know, uh, most of the mining uh, activities in crypto are uh, aimed to uh, maintain the security level of a consensus. For example, if the computing power of uh, Ethereum uh, got like a, a half cutting of reduce, then the, the security level of the blockchain itself uh, reduce also. So this is um, uh, very generalized uh, happened in a uh, proof of work uh, uh, algorithm. And um, there's uh, also some new uh, consensus algorithm like proof of stake and proof of uh, um, uh, space like uh, uh, a chia or uh, you know other um, storage type uh, blockchains, but uh, for Fala it's quite different. Uh, the mining activities on Fala is not helping us to protect the consensus for Fala because, as you know, uh, we are aiming to be a parity chain on Kusama and Polkadot, so the chain, uh, the consensus of the chain is protected and be uh, guaranteed by a relation which would be Polkadot and Kusama. So there's no need for us to maintain the consensus doing uh, approval of anything. So the mining activities on Bala is aiming to provide the computation power to the people who are using this Web3 cloud. So that's the purpose. It's more like, you know, imagine Fala as a Uber. So you can see the servers on Fala is like the drivers the cars and the uh, the 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 users on Fala is more like the passengers and uh, Fala do doesn't own any of them. It's just a, 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 a protocol to link with each other. So in this point, uh, we are uh, the the miners on Fala are providing their CPU uh, computing power to the network so that they get reward. So uh, it's pretty like mining activities, but actually it's not a uh, proof of anything. And because of that, there is a very good advantage happened, uh, which is uh, it's a purely CPU providing um, uh, activity. So it can't be replaced by like uh, a GPU or ASIC. So uh, finally, it's a uh, very uh, environment friendly. It doesn't cost the energy as much as any uh, proof of work uh, product. Yeah, I think you, you touch on a really uh, kind of under appreciated feature of, of Polkadot and the parachains, which is this, this idea of the relay chain. Yeah. I mean, it, it allows you guys to um, you know, not have to worry about that consensus piece, you know, as much, uh, at least for like the core security of the chain, which is, which is really powerful. Um, you can lean on that instead of having to build it all yourself. Um, so I guess that leads into my, my question and you have said, you have explained a little bit, but maybe there's some more to, to dig into here. Whereas, you know, why, why, why substrate and polka dot? Like you have, um, an ERC 20 token, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, that you currently run. And so you must be somewhat familiar with Ethereum and, you know, they're 
moving towards Ethereum 2, which I know is still quite a ways away, but why move away from that into, into Polkadot? And if, if you're going to, you know, maybe you're going to do both. I don't know. Can you explain a little <laughs> bit about the strategy there? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brent. Um, uh, actually, uh, Fala is not a, a project uh, uh, moving from Ethereum to Polkadot. Uh, we did uh, initiate a token on uh, ERC-21 first uh, because uh, we are like uh, in the last year, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, in, in last year, very early stage, we uh, uh, organized a campaign we called like stake job for the uh, KSM holder. So we are like the first, very first uh, native project in Polkadot ecosystem to airdrop tokens to KSM holders. So uh, to uh, to make sure that the tokens, um, you know, uh, the, the value of the token can be uh, transferred and passed by. So uh, we initiate the token on uh, Ethereum first because by then uh, there, we can't do that on Polkadot or Kusama. Uh, there's no uh, state mean uh, in that time, but Fala Network is a very natively poked out project and purely. And uh, the reason uh, we, we, we joined the ecosystem in Q, Q1 uh, 2019, uh, by then the founder of Akala Network introduced us that, look, uh, there's a new uh, infrastructure called Substreet and uh, it can help you guys building up the uh, cloud protocol you want to build uh, with privacy uh, preserving and it's very, um, how to say, it's, security because it's written by Rust. And uh, the function on this infrastructure is uh, uh, it is very easy to go. So uh, that's why we jumped into the ecosystem. I think it's majorly because two things. First, the version of Dr. Gavin Wu, the, 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 the map of the whole Web3, we, we can find, you know, uh, there is a stack, there is a technical stack waiting for us to uh, fill the gap is uh, privacy and competition. So that is, it, it, it is exactly what we want to build. So why not uh, we join this gap? And uh, the, the second reason is that Substrate is, um, uh, when you want to build a blockchain for some uh, certain reason to provide some certain services, which uh, is a very fundamental uh, level uh, customized uh, requirements, not like uh, so you can write a smart contract and solve the problem. Uh, in this case, you need to build your own chain. But in the meanwhile, you know, building public chains is very uh, large engineer uh, project. Mm-hmm. You need to hire lots of people, make a lot of like, fundraising. Uh, that can only support you to deliver the chain. But Substreet can solve this uh, problem for many developers. For example, for us, uh, because our major uh, uh, computation system, decentralized computation system is off-chain, the blockchain itself, uh, 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 the, the, the how to say, the function of the blockchain is to control the security and to control the key management uh, to this decentralized computation cloud. So uh, it's separate. For us, uh, to b- building this chain using Substreet can save us a lot of time and a lot of you know, development, uh, which it does. You know, even uh, just, uh, it's just uh, after like uh, 14 months, we already built Fala Network in, uh, in a whole picture. So uh, thanks to Substreet about this. And after that, we, 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 we you know, we know uh, if you are using Substreet to build up your own chain, uh, you can uh, easily link to with other chains. It's like a, more like an actual bonus for us. But the major reason is Substreet. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about, um, you know, just the motivation for you guys to get involved with Polkadot and why you chose Substrate. Mm-hmm. But maybe we could talk a little bit about what is the, what are the motivations for your potential users? Like, what's the use case? Like, how, if if I want to get involved and I want to u- start using the Fala network, like, what can I do with it? Uh, sure. Uh, I think, thanks for this question, uh, Brian. Um, I think of 
uh, fala is not uh, something that you can. Uh, 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 it's more like a platform to uh, uh, to provide a cloud service. For example, if you are uh, deploying your nodes or uh, your applications on uh, AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure, uh, you can. We we are expecting that after the full pro, you know, cloud uh, platform uh, released for Fala, I, we are expecting that the people in Web three world would transfer their you know their uh, their programs on a centralized cloud to a Web three cloud. So instead of that, you know, if in in some extremely cases, um, the 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 governors won't uh, cut off your line because of some politician reasons. But of course, the major uh, benefit for for Web three cloud is uh, is permissionless, and it's uh, the whole system is trustless, uh, and it's a decentralized governance. And of course, the privacy preserving the data you are deploying on Web three cloud. Uh, it's a it's a end to end encryption. It means that uh, the user's data right can be protected very well, and all the authorizations are not writing in the user agreement in the front page, but but it's written in a, as a kind of smart contract. But speaking, this is you know like a cloud service. But speaking uh, to the uh, exactly uh, samples. Uh, applications already been built on this cloud service. We code. Uh, I want to put like two samples. The first sample is that we already built a a, a DeFi uh, how to say a DeFi platform based on Fala network, so that you know every uh, crypto and the data of these cryptos uh, uh, you are uh, doing. Uh, DeFi activities can be uh, well uh, protected for your uh, privacy. For example, if I'm using Uniswap for now, you know, uh, which token I'm trading, and we, if I'm, re you know, if I'm using a, a landing protocol, which which token I'm landing and uh, buying, it's all open. On like an open book on internet uh, on, on on Ethereum chain, uh, which is very um, you know in traditional financial market, the financial activities for each person, even the traders, is very top sensitive thing. But on crypto, is you not know, upside uh, is an uh, open book. We think in, uh, for some reason uh, the the is not only for trading, right? Uh, I think. Uh, for most of the people, if there is some uh, production can uh, doing uh, swipes, landing by smart contract, but in the meanwhile, your privacy uh, financial data is well protected, they will be uh, you know excited about it. So that's the first use case for us building the DeFi protocols on Fala. Uh, we call the smart contract confidential smart contract. So uh, it's a um, during um, complicated, uh, complete uh, progress, but but in the meanwhile, uh, the data processing is unreachable uh, out you know, from outsiders. The second types of, of use cases I want to share is the uh, uh, Web three analytics. Uh, it's uh, pretty like Google Analytics, which is a data analyzing tool for any of you know front and uh, applications like official websites uh, or uh, you know the, the DeFi applications. Then when you want to you know analyzing your user data, you use Google Analytics. But uh, for us, we think that uh, if you are using it, it also means that the developers are providing their users' data to Google so that mm -hmm. Google can help you you to um, analyzing it for free. But uh, we want to present a, a same function, the same official and user experience, but all of the data collecting and analyzing are, pro, you know, are authorized by the user himself. So um, it's like a, a, a data, um, data protecting tool for the people. And we are hoping that this would be the case 
could show the ability of what Fala can do. Yeah, I think that that's a that's a common problem that uh, developers, especially in that, that want to be privacy focused, uh, yeah. run into with analytics. I I know from from my own previous history, you know we, you know you end up you can't use Google Analytics even though it's the best tool. You end up running things like Countly on a, on a yeah. separate node, and you have to manage that infrastructure, and it's 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 very frustrating um, and time consuming to do yeah. that. But so that, that that's this definitely seems like a powerful use case. And then the first one around, um, you know, smart contract privacy. Yeah, I mean, obviously Ethereum is like the big the big uh, big grill in the room. I mean, everybody pretty much builds on top of Ethereum, but there's there's some limitations and 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 kind of negatives about about doing so. Um, I have a quick question around that. So, you know, part of Ethereum being so transparent, especially with things like Uniswap, there's, there are a lot of, there's a potential for a lot of different kinds of, uh, I guess you could call them attacks. You could just call them usage, but you know, around like extracted value and, and like, you know, these sandwich attacks and stuff where people can see what's happening and then kind of manipulate that because of that transparency. And then also you said, you know, just like you said, you can look at pretty much anybody's trading history or swapping history, lending, just based on knowing an Ethereum address. So are you saying that that Fala helps uh, solve some of those problems? I mean, how does it, can it prevent any of these kinds of uh, man manipulative attacks on um, smart contracts for, for these DeFi protocols? Yeah, that is uh, exactly what we want to present as a first batch of our use cases. Look, uh, look. Uh, I, I think um, every uh, like every uh, kinds of uh, types of applications have its best uh, audience and um, everything uh, be popular is uh, very reasonable. For example, there are very, uh, a, a bunch of advantage for transparent smart contracts. Of course, uh, we, we are not like saying that this is not good, but uh, for some certain activities, there are some um, uh, certain bad case. For example, because of the transparent, the transparent is, is okay, but because of the smart contract transparent for Ethereum, combined with the uh, consensus algorithm for proof of work on uh, Ethereum, what, what, what have been uh, created? The MEV problem. There are so many robots scripts are running by miners on Ethereum so that because of the transparency, so that they can you know uh, see faster than general users for the profitable uh, smart contracts so that they will cut off the profit off. But of course, there are more solutions uh, came out to solve that problem. Uh, there's another case is that, you know, the whales, the, um, the famous people, they, the, the celebrities, they, they, you know, they, their addresses always be marked by the community. And okay. if they are doing any activities, people will say, look, SPF is selling some coins and and uh, Vitalik is selling some coins, something like this. I think uh, this is only for the world. And you, it's a dark uh, forest for DeFi on Ethereum for now. You know, uh, you yeah. don't know what's the level of your uh, upside uh, enemies are trying to get more profitable than your address. So if you're rich, if you're uh, doing a lot of activities, People will mark you definitely. So uh, this this is the dark side of the transparency. You know, I mean, for some uh, activities, you if you want to find somewhere to hide your uh, uh, DeFi uh, uh, activities, there's no such uh, place. But what you can do on Ethereum for now. Uh, for sure, you can use like Tornado Cash to mix some some crypto. That's all. But you, even after you doing that, you and you want to like uh, keep on, you know, be a LP in any protocol. Uh, the the same trouble came up came up again. So uh, it's just the stage, you know. Uh, last year is the the and last year and this year is just the start for DeFi. DeFi will be a growth. Uh, more, much, 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 much more prosper than ever in the coming years. So definitely, there will be a lot of 
you know, more intelligence data analyzing robots and scream come out on the chain. So uh, at last, I don't think, you know, any um, general people uh, can, uh, you know, enjoy their DeFi journey anymore in the future, mm -hmm. unless there are uh, something came out to protect their own strategy. We are now trying to helping people to do like, um, money laundry uh, in any uh, uh, situation, but it's more like uh, we are pro providing a safe house for the people who want to hide their financial strategy and their per personal uh, you know, uh, financial activities for certain reason. Because if you don't do that, the smarter guys, the hackers and uh, the, the, the professional uh, individuals will cut off all the profit on chain. So without any doubt, so that's the you know that's the key point of it. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you brought this up too because this I, I did want to go here briefly real quick. You know I think um, you know whenever you're working on something that deals with uh, privacy or, or you know that kind of uh, you know kind of protecting the individual yeah. and, and and their activity, there becomes a question of like, well, you know. Why did why do we need that? Why why does that like what are, what are people afraid of? Like why do they need to protect this or, or kind of make this not public? Um, you, you mentioned that you've worked for Tencent and Didi, um, and I think we're all pretty well aware that you know a lot of countries like China and others are, are trying to actually see more of this stuff and kind of control more of this as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And it's like then in Europe as well. You know, we 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 talk with different. Uh, countries around, yeah. you know, they have different regulatory restrictions around what kind of coins and, and then the banks are afraid to support Monero and these other privacy coins. And so it's this constant struggle. It's like, well, we want privacy. We want this security, but we have to be transparent. And so how have you found the challenge of, of building that just kind of, you know, from your part of the world? Like what what do you like? How do you see the future playing out for this? I mean, is there room to have more and more of these privacy networks or do you think that the governments are going to kind of try and build their own and and, and restrict that more mm -hmm. or do you think everybody plays well together yeah that that's a very large question now but i, I will <laughs> try to think it's good but though but but i will try to uh, you know uh, share my personal insights like uh, first, I think privacy matters more in the near days. Uh, it's because people are, you know, threatened by the big biggest companies. It's pretty like uh, in the old times, you know, in, in, in the basic human right in America, there's uh, something like uh, people have the right to uh, hold their own weapons so that if some big, you know, the, the big governors making evil, people have the right to fight, right? But when we come into 2020, you, you, you will find out that no one, I mean, for now, no one have the, you know, ability to fight against like Google, Facebook, uh, any big companies like this. Uh, the, the same situation is in China because <clears throat> they see everything from you. They can uh, trace mm -hmm. everything from you. So I, I, will, uh, uh, I will treat my uh, uh, career and uh, my, uh, the, the purpose of uh, Fala Network as a weapon to the people that um, it's a safe house. It's a weapon if you, if you don't want to be uh, monitored by any big ones. But of course, there are more questions come on, like what's the, why people care, why people will, uh, this come into a theory. Uh, I, I, I think uh, it's like, a, you are also a product manager. You know that like, uh, if you uh, reduce uh, some uh, user experience and treat off for privacy or any other uh, uh, functions, it will be extremely uh, hard for people to understand the meaning of privacy. But if if you are like giving them the same um, level of user experience, but in the meanwhile, like I'm a privacy enhancing product, um, then people will use it. There's a good sample 
like Apple, right? Apple have better privacy uh, function to general people uh, for uh, in some, you know, in the whole system so that uh, people think, okay, uh, if I, 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 you know, if I want to uh, enhance my pri data privacy, I will. Apple is better than Android at least. So, uh, something like that. There's a, a successful sample there that people will care privacy. And uh, uh, another point is that I, I, I did uh, facing into a lot of challenges, you know, before me. Like crypto is a. Uh, Funded by different types of um, encrypt, encryption uh, fans and uh, professors and you know uh, enterprises people, uh, so uh, these guys uh, 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 are very upset by the encryption theory and encryption protocols uh, purely in mass, but actually uh, the real stuff. Uh, we are using these days are not based on mass, but it's combined mass and human nature, which is um, the fundamental of game theory. For example, proof of work, um, Ethereum or Bitcoin, any uh, like uh, simple uh, uh, similar cryptos in theory level, they can be attacked by a uh, double spend. But because of the game theory begin to work in real world, that uh, means that uh, it, it haven't been so far, so that mm -hmm. uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the the privacy preserving protocols, um, if uh, the 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 purity theory in the books, you know, it can't be practiced very well. But if you want to get out get out with it and using it in industry, you need to combine it with the like token economic, something like this to make sure it can really run uh, by the driving of human nature. So uh, um, um, for one of my major challenges is that I think crypto uh, fans hate TE because everybody will say, look, uh, the hardware privacy enhancing solution is uh, can be attacked by uh, theory, of course it is, but uh, in our uh, idea that combined the, this technology with the blockchain, with game theory, actually it can be much, much more powerful than before. And uh, uh, it's aiming to uh, protect the data, not aiming to protect the, how to say, the, um, the use cases that the technology are providing mm -hmm. is different types of things. So um, yeah, just imagine file network as a enhancing privacy technology. Uh, it will be much easier to understand. Yeah, I I remember. Um, I, I guess several years ago, I think it was maybe Emin Gunsur from uh, Avalanche who had kind of proposed some using TEE to like really build a scalable blockchain. This is kind of like when the scalability stuff was first kind of popping up mm -hmm. uh, within blockchain. And there were like some concerns around the fact that like, um, I believe Intel uh, had control of the, yeah. the kind of SGX yeah. and all that. And I mean, has that situation gotten better? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert at this. I just mm -hmm. kind of remember uh, following this a bit, but how do you see that concern, and is that something that has changed over the last few years since then? Mm, for uh, for um, how to say, for TE standard in a CPU industry, uh, it's um, uh, it, 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 the 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 major updating is uh, they moving the uh, the 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 how to say the function of TE from um, general. Uh, CPU into a more professional CPU like uh, the, 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 ser the, the CPUs for servers. So it means that uh, they, um, in the original design, they think uh, uh, SGX or uh, AMD SCV is uh, used in locally that mm -hmm. the user will use it uh, or the developers will write in some local programs to store some certain data in people's uh, local computers. But now the trend is like they are moving it from a local to a more cloud platform. Uh, but of course, I think uh, it's very dangerous 
to let Intel and AMD to control the like the backdoor or the or the or the, or the, or the hardwares. So that's why uh, we are building Fala. I think Fala is a uh, uh, use you you know is a quite uh, valuable to solve this problem that we don't rely on a single uh, TE CPU, but uh, we uh, support like Intel, AMD, or ARM in the future, mm -hmm. so that uh, you know um, uh, it it will reduce the harmful. Uh, if uh, any uh, single of them uh, making evil things, and in the otherwise, we use uh, the blockchain. The 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 we we have a role. We call them uh, gatekeepers. We use the gatekeepers to control and management the keys running inside these TEs and servers. And because Fala is a cloud, not like um, a it's more like a cloud rather than a blockchain. So we, we, we have so many T servers on the network so that we can random, randomly send in the confidential task in these computing uh, processors. For example, uh, uh, if I only have you know, a, a dozen nodes, TE nodes, uh, one of them are uh, uh, successful uh, uh, attack attacked. Then uh, the data inside is uh, will be uh, leaked in any way. But uh, because Fala have like more than a thousand thousands of TEs, so even you are deploy, you know who are deploying what kinds of uh, computation tasks or programs, but you don't know. Uh, which server are running which uh, program so that it mm -hmm. will um, like uh, you can imagine that it's another lock or another cover layer for the TE uh, beyond just the TE so the uh, uh, hackers won't know which machine is running which thing and they can't like they will fail. So because if you look at the, the, the reports for our Intel SGX problems, the all of them, the, the major uh, attentions are from a physical, you know, uh, mm -hmm. attentions yeah. to the machines. And if you can't control the machine, you don't know where it is, and you don't know who is running it, you can't do it. So that's a very simple idea. So we think we are using the blockchain blockchain to enhance the security level of TE itself uh, is, of course, is a better version. Interesting. Uh, interesting mitigation uh, for that problem. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I really appreciate you being candid about those answers. Those are some tough questions, I, I'm sure. Um, let's talk about something a little bit more fun real quick. Um, <laughs> the, the parachain auctions are, are happening right now. Yeah. Um, I believe the third one just ended. And we're in the fourth period. Um, I know that Parity has said that they're going to do five yeah. up front, and then they're going to kind of pause and reassess how things are going. Um, how are things going for you guys? You guys are, uh, I think, I believe you're vying for this <laughs> this next slot. Yeah, we are. We are, we are fighting uh, for the fourth slot with uh, Bifrost together. I think uh, it's very interesting to see the first back to back. You know. Um, competitions between two parachains for one slot because uh, the first one, the second one, the third one, the, the, the difference between the competitors are so far. So it's not, you know, so uh, excited as it, it's now. <laughs> so uh, uh, for now, uh, our votes and uh, by far, the votes are very near. And uh, in our end, because uh, we are a project already listing and we are not initial new token, our canary network on uh, Kusama. So uh, we are using our, like, you know, just we have just one token for all chains. So um, mm -hmm. uh, it means that people can calculate their APY and to, um, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, make plans for, for the risk for, 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 for consider their uh, financial risk in joining this game. Uh, so it's quite not the same situation with uh, other projects, I think. Um, we are doing a lot of job uh, to you know, enhance the entertainment uh, when you are doing contributions, like we are doing different types of NFT rewards. 
uh, RMRK, another project on, Poda, on Kusama. And we are also uh, designed uh, like three stages of reverse ratio for different uh, male zones. For now, it's like one can some you can uh, get 150 far token as your reward. So uh, it's pretty exciting to watch the you know the list board uh, between me <laughs> and yeah. uh, Bifrost. So I, I yeah I, I, I think uh, people are very uh, happy to see this kind of thing happen because in this case case uh it's a game theory between each other and only in this case the slot can be occup can be you know be successful beat by the you know most capable uh project so uh it maximized the, the, the it it is helping maximize the total ksm staking number for uh top five sauce yeah, it's been fascinating watching this. Um, and, and you're right, like the first three kind of ran away with it at first. But, you know, now that there's some competition, I mean, has that changed at all how you guys have approached like marketing the whole thing or like reaching out to your community now that you know that it's like, going to be very close for these these last two auction or, you know, slots for right now? Yeah, we, we, we did something, but it's not just uh, directly target on the reward uh, ratio or the reward campaign. But... Uh, more um, more target on the you know the real utility for the token itself. For example, in last weekend, uh, we public uh, a preview uh, paper for our token economic. It means that uh, it's re it is rewritten very well by uh, Doctor Constantine um, uh, to uh, uh, to make people understand you know how the TE mining or the server mining on Fala network. Uh, what's the whole module of it and how you use FALA tokens to stake for your machines and how you get reward for providing your computation power to the network a, a whole series about it so that people can understand okay, uh, FALA token is a, you know, like a utility I can use it to purchase the cloud service and I, if I have a server, I can also join the cloud and I can earn uh, some part from the cloud. So in this perspective, uh, we are. Uh, 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 it means that uh, we, we are adding uh, one function that the crow loan reward you get from Fala, you can use, although it's on white state, but you can also using it to uh, stake for your machines uh, if you want to mine Fala. So that's why uh, we are getting more and more votes in the near days, but can't say we are winning, but uh, yeah, we are trying to, right? Well, I, I think uh, I think it's going to be very uh, tight as we come down to the end and uh, yeah. look forward to seeing how this plays out for you. I, I, I want to wish you guys luck. I have one final question for you that we ask all of the people we have on the uh, on the podcast, and that is we ask everybody to give a chaos score one to ten so what i mean by that is everybody knows the slogan for kusama is expect chaos. chaos right <laughs> and we've seen quite a bit throughout the last few weeks and months um and even years i guess but i'd love to hear from you from your perspective how chaotic has this whole thing been for you guys one to ten ten being extremely chaotic <sighs> i think he's seven yeah it's a seven. it's a little bit you know it, it's the especially for the for the fourth slot and the preparation we are building around it uh it's out of expecting in many points so it's um, um it's more than six so it's <laughs> and it, it, it's not driving me crazy at this stage so it's not eight yeah that's, uh, that's the answer great Great. Thank you, Greg. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, uh, this was great, a great conversation, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and it was good to get to talk about something that I think is is very uh, important, which is you know privacy and, and security for people uh, building and, and using blockchain. So I just want to say thanks again to our guest Marvin. It was great learning about Fala and their Kusama project, Kala. Make sure you like, subscribe, and review us on your favorite podcast platform. And we'll be sure to bring you along as we get a backstage pass to the world of parachain auctions. Remember, you can always learn more about all things crypto by going to kraken.com learn. Until next time, 
I'm Brian Hoffman, and this has been the Parachain Auctions podcast hosted by Kraken. Thank you, Brian. See you. This content is not financial or investment advice. All interviews and discussions are opinions only. Kraken does not endorse the accuracy of this content. None of the following information should be construed as a recommendation to support any specific parachain project or to participate in parachain auctions in general. See our terms of service for more information.